Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here today. Um, today I'd like to talk to you about the 2020 Digital Census. Um, there we go. Um, so my name is Katie Sullivan, and I'm a master's student in the Global Human Development Program here at Georgetown. Um, at the Beck Center, I'm a student analyst working in the data and digital pro uh, portfolio with fellow Kyla Pullenweider. Um, I was really excited to join this team because I'm interested in how governments can use digital tools to improve their service delivery to their constituents. Over the past 10 weeks, I've had the pleasure to explore how cities can um, better improve their um, rollout of the census to different to their constituents. So on April 1st, we'll be conducting the census. This happens every 10 years and it's mandated by the Constitution. Everybody who lives within the U.S. is required by law to participate. It's actually one of the most complicated operations that the U.S. government undertakes, as Kel mentioned, um, and there are several factors in the 2020 census that are going to make it even more complicated. The big one is that, for the first time, respondents will have the opportunity to fill out an online form or respond over the phone in addition to the traditional mail-in option. And now, while this might be more convenient for some, it also opens the door to a host of problems and challenges that the Census Bureau has not had to deal with before. In addition, to make it, if this wasn't tricky enough, um, the census is facing even more of an uphill battle due to the polarized political climate and increased distrust, excuse me, distrust of government that we're facing currently. Kel um, mentioned some of these challenges, but um, we'll go through a couple of the digital challenges that the census faces. Um, specifically, we have digital access and divide. Not everybody is on the internet, and some people face challenges with using, um, getting online, and so this makes, this makes it more challenging for people to access the form. We also have data privacy concerns. In the wake of several well-publicized data breaches, people are not sure whether information that they enter online is secure or how it will be shared or stored. Disinformation is a term that we use for information, false information that is shared by bad actors purposefully to make sure um, to change public opinion or alter people's behavior. And so because dis disinformation was present in the last election, people don't know if they can trust census information that they find, and cities are unsure how to handle um, a disinformation campaign if it were to occur. And then finally, just knowledge gaps. People don't know how to access the form, and cities are unaware of how the digital form will be rolled out. So taken together, these, all of these factors um, increase the possibility of an undercount, which is a situation in which a large share of the population is not counted in the census. And this is a problem for, for many reasons, and it can affect our democracy for the next 10 years and beyond. Um, specific impacts are cities won't get the funding and political representation that they're due, um, as well as urban planners won't be able to use the census to allocate resources like emergency services in schools where the population most needs them. Um, finally, the census is America's foundational data set, and so this means that research that um, economists and social scientists and demographers are doing won't be based on an accurate count. So, Cities, however, can play a key role in making sure that constituents are counted equitably and completely. Um, there are several reasons why this is the case. The first is that cities receive substantial federal funding, and so it's in their best interest to make sure that everybody, um, all of their constituents are counted. They also um, have better capacity for grassroots engagement because they're located um, more, more uh, close to the people that live within them. And they also have more trust within hard-to-count communities than higher levels of government, like state or federal government. Um, they also are knowledgeable about local conditions and priorities and can use that knowledge to, to act um, and respond to local conditions. However, cities are usually strapped for time, resources, and funding. They often don't have the capacity that they need to, um, to carry out an effective count. In addition, um, for this reason, they really need guidance on how to make sure that um, they're using the right outreach strategies to reach everybody within them. So at the Beck Center, we saw an opportunity to help empower cities to count their constituents more um, completely and accurately. And so we asked the question, how might we help city governments to understand the digital challenges that this census poses in order to help cities use this knowledge to count, um, count the residents living within them? And so our solution is that we put together a digital census playbook, which is our fancy term for a collection of resources that somebody within a city government could take a quick look through and then use to inform their decision making. So it's meant to be a really easy to read, um, comprehensive resource that um, kind of combines all of the information in one place. Um, and to do this, we 
took a bunch of information from different sources. Um, we combed through some of the dense existing literature on the census, everything from academic papers to um, you know, resources created for other um, audiences like NGOs, um, and pulled out the points that are most salient for the census. We also did a quantitative survey of um, city officials on the priorities that they have around the census, as well as extensive qualitative interviews with city officials as well as subject matter experts and city census innovators, who I'll talk about in a moment, um, who are basically completing interesting get out the count efforts. The first part of the playbook that, the first component rather, is a topic summary uh, one-pager, a set of topic summary one-pagers on subjects that may be a little bit technical, like disinformation, um, where somebody within the city government would need to read through and understand a topic in a short amount of time. So we have an example here of a few topic one-pagers that we've put together, um, meant to be brief descriptions of, for example, what is di disinformation and why is it important, or how does the Census Bureau keep my data private. Um, we then put together a series of practical how-to guides and checklists that cities can use to respond to constituents' questions and also to inform policy. Um, and here we have two examples. The one on the left goes through census questions and asks, answers the question, you know, why is this question asked? Because that's something that cities are hearing from their constituents. And then on the right, we just have an overview of the um, rollout timeline and points of contact from the Census Bureau to cities. And then finally, um, we have our census uh, case studies, which this actually wasn't originally part of our plan, but as part of the user-centered iterative process that we went through to produce the playbook, we were doing multiple rounds of edits and feedback from the cities. And the number one thing that we heard from them is that they're interested in understanding what other cities are doing around the census. And so in response, we interviewed several cities that are doing interesting things and put together case studies on what they're doing. So one example is Los Angeles um, that has put together a census action kiosk program where they're essentially setting up computer labs within libraries and schools, public places where constituents who maybe don't have internet access at home or just have questions can come and get their questions answered and actually fill out the online form. So finally, I'd like to reflect a bit on the impact of this project. Um, at BEC, we're all about delivering impact at scale and the playbook really fits within this mandate. Um, within the next couple of weeks, we plan to release the playbook and um, distribute it in partnership with the National League of Cities and Code for America um, to NLC's city partners. We also, in the new year, are planning to convene Q&A webinars, um, which will be a chance for city officials to read through the playbook and then come and get their questions answered um, from experts. Ultimately, our goal here is to foster collaboration between cities for the census, but then also beyond the census to build networks so that they can um, build collaboration around future issues. Um, finally, you might be asking what actions you can take. As Kel already mentioned, our ask for you is simple. We'd like you to A, fill out the census form and tell your friends, family, and colleagues why it's important. Um, together, we all have a part to play in ensuring that everyone counts. Thank you.